אוקיי, זה שיעור טונאית, איז לעילוי נשמעת משיח בן פנחס הכהן מול הקנדוף, that passed away from the corona. So, hopefully he will pray for all of us. that Hashem will take the corona already out of here. Amen. And we go Amen. back to normal, normal life. Amen. So. Okay, I'll get to it. Do you remember what letter are we, are we in? We completed yeah. proof. Yes. Reish, Reish. Reish, Reish. Reish, okay, Reish. <laughs> Sorry. Reish, Reish means authority. Leadership. That's right. He likes to to control a planner. Likes to build. Very sharp mind. Very sharp. And very quick to catch. And very quick to catch what's, what's been said. Uh, some people, ah, ah, well, this is not the case over here. Uh, some people, if you say Aleph, they know already what you're trying to say. That's Reish. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if it's Rachamim, it's Rachel, Mordechai, that every there. Ari, Ruben, Rabbi, Ruben. Ari, Ari, Ruben. Okay. Raphael, Raphael, Rivka. Yeah. Abraham. And so on and so on. They all have the same, same uh, cocktail inside of them. The question, what we're going to do with that? Now, if it goes to the wrong side, if it goes to the wrong side, this person will be almost impossible to control. He is not at ease, you know, all the time he is. No menucha, no peace and quiet for him. Because when you not, you see, many people, they having a miserable life and there is a reason for this. And the reason is, today you hear it a lot. I don't feel accomplished. I don't feel, I have to find myself. I have to do this. I have to be NP. I have to be ND. I have to be an OPA. <laughs> because all the component that she, she or he, they have inside is not coming into, into real action, to reality. So we don't know what to do with, with ourselves. And it's a big problem. You see, when a person was able to, to, to reveal what he has in, inside, nothing will bother him. Nothing will bother him. Harav, yes. there's a word in English called fruition. Fruition. It means to bring things 
to fruit, fruitful, uh, fruition. Fruitful. It means to bring things to be fruition. So it's like interesting. It's from the source, the root of fruit. Fruit, yeah. To bring things forward. Forward. You know, once I, I told a, a friend of mine that Raham Ovadia, Allah Shalom, when he came to, to the weddings of the grandchildren. Hi, have a good night. Hello, hello. So I told them he came to the wedding. Of course, he made the chupa. And then he stayed for 15 minutes on the clock and he left home. Your grandchild get, getting married, where are you going? He says, I'm going back to my books, you know. Somebody have to learn, you know. Meaning you tell him, Mata normally? Are you, are you, are you normal? Such a good food, music, so many people. They, they come, they're gonna kiss your hand, give a brachot, he says, I'm going home. Take me home, so come on, why? So imagine that to tell him, come, we'll take you to Cancun. He will. Look at you like you, you, know, you lost it. He found himself. He, he found what he came to, 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 to the world for, to be a, a, a leader, to be this. So, nothing else about it. Today, you can see the world is, cannot sit one second at ease. I have to be here, I have to be there. I have to be in this restaurant, I have to go there. Uh, all the time. So, if I cannot go, so we have Amazon. I yeah. get on Amazon, yalla. Something I have to do. Now, not only the Reish, they have so many good qualities, all of a sudden he become a person, miserable one. What a miss, what a miss. And also very easy to influence. If he is not himself, one friend, a bad one will take him all the way out. Rabbi, I'm sorry, I just joined the group. What letter are you doing? Reish. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now we're going to Shin. Reish is a very popular letter, right? Very popular. You can see it almost in most of the, of the names, you know. Reish. Yesterday we spoke about Emish, right? Aimish, Aimish. Aimish again. Mm -hmm. which, which letter am I talking about? Shin. Now we're coming to Shin now. Now we are in Shin. Oh, now. Meaning, very powerful. Whoever have Aleph and Mem and Shin, these people, even if they are quiet on this inside they have, is a powerhouse. Shin is uh, one of Hashem's uh, letters, right? What, what? Shaddai, Hashem, uh, Shin is one of Hashem's uh, names, Shaddai. Yeah, yeah. Right? But now, 
when you see Aleph in, in the name and you see a mem, imagine a name uh, uh, Moshe. Moshe. Not a powerhouse, he's already quite almost atomic bomb. Shmuel. 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 Shmuel, wow, wow, wow. Powerhouse, and Shmuel was a powerhouse. But the higher he go, if he goes to the wrong side, the fall will be like nuclear. The nuclear, either you can destroy, either you can use it to source of electricity or source of, you know, whatever people need. Can destroy and it can be very good. Depends what you're doing with that. Very creative. These people that have Aleph Memshin, very creative. But sensitive, sensitive. He might don't show it, but very sensitive. Initiator, initiator. He don't sit uh, just uh, like this, okay. He wants to. Proactive. Yes. Very influential, very influential. And he has a good heart. He is always care about the other person. Amiti, do you know what Amiti means? Amiti, no? Yeah, truthful. Real, original. He is truthful. Rabbi, it goes for Shin and Sin together or just for Shin? Shin and Sin. Like Simcha, is, it's also the same? Shin, Simcha, Sarah. Thank you. Now they have also self-confidence. A lot of self-confidence. Now, that's the good side of it. And it's very good. When it goes to the wrong side, you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. What will happen? It'll be a very good candidate for addiction. You see, all the people that go for addiction, they have big neshama sensitive one, where they don't find the right highway, they're gonna wind up on the blackjack table, on the roulette, even in the machine, like the old ones, you know? Ding, ding, ding. They're gonna lose it. And it's gonna be full of lie. Not one word of a mat will come out of his mouth. And I'm always thinking when Rabbi Yochanan saw Resh Lakish 
and he was the head of the mafia then. How did he tell him that you have koach for Torah? How did he know? Resh Lakish was an armed robber. Armed robber. BLM, Antifa. Could you imagine Resh Lakish being the head of Antifa? And, and Rabbi Yochanan looks at him and says, Chelach Leoraita. You are going to be a big Tamid Chacham. His name was Shimon. He was asking him, what's your name? He says, Shimon. Ah, Shimon. You're starting with Shin, right? Aha. Aha. That's why you on the street rubbing people in a broad daylight. Let's go to Yeshiva, Habibi. This Korach, we can use it there. Do you know what it means to be the Chavruta of, of Rabbi Yochanan? Rish Lakish passed away. Rabbi Yochanan lost his mind. He lost his mind. He lost 10 children, 10 children. When he was alive, he had 10 boys, he buried them all. And yet, he took a small bone from the last one, he put it in, in, in his pocket, and he saw people, you know, they lost a relative. He said, why are you crying? He said, I just lost a relative. He said, you, you lost what? Bo, bo, bo. You see this? This is my 10th child. Why are you crying? It's not in your hands. Life has to go on. Yala. We have to learn. Let's go. He didn't lose his mind. To lose 10 kids, he didn't lose his mind. When Rash Lakish passed away, Rabbi Yochanan became a case. He became a mental case. So bad that Rahami made a the gathering. They were reading for him a tefillah, Hashem should take him. Did you hear something like this once? They praying for him, Hashem should take him. Why? Somebody was asking why they didn't pray that he will build, that he'll get well. When he will get well and he will not find somebody like Resh Lakish, again he will be depressed. So they're saying to Hashem, please take him. It becomes a Hilul Hashem. And that's how he died. Chachamim prayed for him, he should go. Why? Because he lost his best, best chavruta. Meaning for him, he said, I have nothing to do anymore in this world. My job is over. That's what happened. He was able to see that this guy with all the, the wickedness that he has, if I'll take it to the right side, nobody like him. Who knows how many kids we missed between the fingers, between the fingers, because we didn't know what to do with them. And yet we punished them we criticize them. Uh, instead of us, bang on the, what we're doing. Hashem gave us such a good child, so much he has inside, and we don't know what to do with that. Yeah. 
You know how many kids are like that? From my own experience, I'll tell you. People that I met on the street with tattoos, with earrings, with uh, punks, 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 how much punks? Israeli punks. Today, I'm sure they know more Torah than I know. Punks. I paid for them to take off the tattoos. They had tattoos all over. Today they become they became Rosh Lelim, Rosh He teaching other people. You see, you can be a punk, and you can be big tamid chacham. I tell you a story. So parents should start to wake up. My mezuzot in my house, do you know whom I, I bought it from? You probably think I'm crazy. Thief. I'm not. A thief person. A person that after my lecture in Or Yehuda, it's a place in, in Israel. I think it was more than 25 years ago. I saw Avrech, Avrech, sitting on his chair, cannot move. I thought I offended him. I came to him and said, listen, if I said something to offend you, I really I have to apologize. He said, no, 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 Chazve Shalom, said, don't say it. I said, he said, all my past came back to me. He said, tonight you made my match like you know me for years. I said, I don't know you, Bukhlal. What are you talking about? From the story that he told me, I found out that he was the biggest thief in all Yehuda. He was a burglar. He was a burglar that he said, I know every apartment in the, in the town. I can tell you every apartment, what there is inside. I don't care what door they had, what is the head, I was able to go in. I told him, you? You? He said, yes, me. I, said, I can't believe it. He was looking because Adin with sad eyes, you know, look like a Tamid Chacham. Told him, I, I don't buy it from you. He said, I'm telling you, that's, what, that's who I was. He said, until one day I decided that's enough for me. Okay, I told him, so what are you doing now? He said, I'm a sofer, sofer. Sofer, what sofer? Sofer stam. I'm, I'm writing Sefer Torah, Tfilin and Mezuzot. The same hand that opened every key, every door to steal, now the same hand is writing Mezuzot, he's writing. Could you believe this? Could you believe this? I couldn't go home. I sat next to him. I said, you know what? You by yourself, you mezuzah you. I have to kiss you. How did you do it? And I see the his hands, delicate hands, not rough, you see, the hands of Sofer, Sofer, Bono Shel Olam, Bono Shel Olam, 
the same hand that can open doors, the same hand can take the colmos and write mezuzot for the Jews. I told them, can I ask you a question? He says, yes. <clears throat> can I buy from you mezuzot, he says. Don't laugh at me. I said, why, why am I laughing at you? I'm serious. He said, you know, I, I, I was a thief. I don't, don't say it. Don't say it anymore. Dafka from you, I want to buy. Dafka. Because when you write, Akalush Bogo have so much enjoyment. Bye, bye, bye. Look what a Jew can do. Can be there, can be there, there. What was his name? I give Shimon you one was guess. my question. Shimon? That was my question. I give you one guess. Shimon. Simon, Simon. Simon. <laughs> My father said his name was Simon. I said, ah, Simon. Oh. Of course you like this. Then I started to explain him a, 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 bit, a, a bit about a name. She said, oh, oh, oh. I bought from him on the spot. I told him, how many mezuzot you have over here? Can I see your handwriting? He says, yes, I'll show you one. <laughs> he took one out. I'm telling you, I almost fainted. What the handwriting? Like printing. So, that's you? He said, yeah, that, that, that's all I write. I told him, how many you have over here? He told me I have 25. I told them, you had 25. I'm buying them. He said, like, come on. I said, I'm buying the 25. He said, he told, he told me, what are you going to do with this? I told him, I'm going to go home. I'm going to change my mezuzot. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. I bought the mezuzot. I came home. I took off. The one that I bought in Jerusalem from somebody picked up with Chacham. I said, that's better. That's better. It smells good. It Rabbi, smells good. you ask him why, what made him, what brought on the change? Did he tell you? I didn't want to tell you, but if you're asking me... <laughs> I just wanted to know because it's such a dramatic change to go from one side to the other. I just want to know what brought that, what inspired him. So he told me, I said, I'll skip it because I, I don't want you to take, uh, to have wrong impressions. I was asking him, what made you change? He said to me, You came here eight years ago on me. I said, okay, yes. Every time I come, I speak there. He says, my friend, my friends, they took me to the, the lectures because we had to wait until one our apartment, the people will go out and we're gonna go in. <laughs> so they said, let's go to Shiu, let's go to Shiu. I said, why didn't you go to a, a restaurant? This is all. My friend said, you know what? Let's go have some fun. Okay. I'm looking at him, I said, maybe I recognize him from eight years ago. It's not so, I don't know. Because Every time I came there, the place was packed. 
ממש פת. So, he said, I sat down and I spoke about, I spoke about happiness, happiness. He, he told me what I spoke about. He says, every word that came out of you, I felt like my Tyson gave me a punch. Boom and boom. I don't know, he said, something happened to me. That night I didn't go to Steve. He said, I couldn't go. I told him, so what did you do? He told me, I went home and I cried all night. I said, I'm lost, I'm an idiot, I'll be in jail probably. And he, and he said, I was in jail already. So now it happened to me that I stayed there for a month. So he said, I came to every class. I was after you and you didn't know even. I said, no. I don't recognize you. He said, everywhere that, that you go, I went after you. Because every shul I come, they, I'm going to Daven and, and, and Amincha, no, oh, he's here. Okay, Abotai, yalla. Talk over here, talk over here. He said, I was there also. He said, but now I decided I'm doing tshuva. I have to change. I found a coil over here. They, they helped me. And from then on, that's it. So now he told me, it's not only me, all my friends, they all, all left us. Rabbi, you should tell that story in your book. It's amazing. <laughs> what a small world. Amazing. He, so he, said, he said, I heard they put flyers that I'm in town. And so everybody, came. So he said, I decided to come to see you. And you the, the same one, you punching everybody in the nice way, but you punching, you punching, he says, tonight you bought all my pass back and it's, I said, okay, good. So then we, 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 we became very close friends, of course, right? I came home, I changed all my mezuzot. Tag, tag, I took it out, changed it, a new one, I said, Bono Shalom. Just to look at this and to see what a person can be. Same thing with kids. They can be the worst children, and after a while, they can be the best child that you have. If we know what to do with them, if we know how to talk to their hearts. You cannot talk to the child and you on the phone. It's not from the heart. So why should listen to you? Why? So every time you see Aleph Mem Shiv, you have to know you have a powerhouse in your hands. And the parents should wake up from the sleep and roll your sleeves and go to work. Because nobody over here knows, maybe the Mashiach was born in his house. That's how you have to treat every child. Maybe this child that I'm talking now, maybe that's the Mashiach, I don't know. How do you know? Well, there are, it's only two letters of this uh, like, laminate sheet. Ah, 
No. Only what, what? If, if only two letters, na lamad and shin. Aleph mem shin. It has to be Aleph lam. Aleph mem shin. Emish. Emish. Rav, she wants to know if there's only two letters from the three letters Rav mentioned. Is it still the same powerhouse? The child. Even one letter is enough. Two is already gone. So, Rabbi, we have work to do, Shamaya, right? Koda Rav, I have a question. Yes. The name Sha Shalom. You give such a not not I would say a good uh, description because it has lamed it has sheen and I don't know didn't what's like the description? No, uh, that he is a live in illusion that he demands respect to himself. Uh, what was the there was not a not a good stubborn, stubborn like stubborn that he like can get. Meal. Stubborn, and then you know that he can get, be, a, get angry fast. You have to be stubborn. If you're not stubborn, you will never be a tamid chacham. Whatever I said is for the good, and you can take it to the wrong sides. To be like a critic, very good. You can be a, a, a critic of yourself. Why I'm not doing better? Why I'm not going to learn more? Why I'm not behaving nice to my wife? Why I'm not doing this? That's a very good one. Introspection, of like looking into yourself and trying to correct your ways. So let's say Introspection. Let's say fear. Everything that you have, it can go to the wrong side and it can go to the good side. Laziness, right? When it comes time to have a road, you're lazy. Your friend comes and says, let's go to the beach, let's go to the beach. No, I cannot go to the beach. And say, Lot Sanua. Ah, come on, you must your Come on, let's go. Say, no, no, I'm tired, I'm tired. You're becoming lazy. Very good. Very. What's wrong with this? That's a very good laziness. Rabbi, how about if a child has very good, like very good mind, right? But cannot sit, like you mentioned a couple of names that this child cannot sit in one place. Like how can you make this child learn to write if he cannot sit in one place and learn? So he's not sitting in one place. Okay, so what's wrong with that? Then the teacher said he has a nail in his foot. Let the teacher out for a second. Yeah. No, it has nothing to do with what, has, you know, it's a good thing that he's energetic, that he's, you know, a lot of good things, but the problem is, it's not a problem. The question is, how do you channel this child to the path of the Torah to send him to the yeshiva if he cannot sit still because usually what people in the yeshiva do like men they sit and learn if he doesn't have a butt to sit down how is he going to learn but he's a very smart he catches fast this, all of the very smart this I'm sorry? these boys are that not able to see it usually they're very Smart, smart, energetic. They need challenges. They want to build. They cannot sit in one place. It's true. It's very true. I work with these kids. You'll be surprised that these kids will be the best ones. They'll build yeshivot. They'll build kolili. Nobody play for nothing. They cannot sit in one place. They cannot. Always has to be on the move. That's very good. Some kids, if you put them on the chair in the morning, you come at night time, he's still in the same chair. Nothing will come out of him. But how do you make him go to Shiva if he doesn't, you know, like 
she cannot sit in one place. She says, I cannot sit and learn, mom. I cannot just sit and learn. But there is, like you said, it's very smart. Doesn't need million time explanation. One time and that's it, gets it. Okay. okay. Like how do you, how do you um, give the motivation or give the right words? You, you want me now to teach you everything in uh, two <laughs> minutes? I'm not. Um, no. I have to see a child just to look at him. I'll just smell him. I know exactly what he wants. And then you can go home and everything will be fine. Okay, we'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Let's go to Taf. Taf. Not too many names have. Taf there. Right. Yeah, root. The letter itself. Yeah. You did, Rabbi? You did, yes, very good. Tamara. Tehila. Tamara. Tehila. Bacheva, very good. Tamara. Tamara. What about Talia? Talia is with Tet. Batia. Batia, very good. Tamir. Tamir. We don't like this name of these names. Why? <laughs> Where is it written in the Torah? Oh, so is it just a secular Israeli name? Oh, okay, thank you. Unfortunately, yes. So what happens if someone has the name Amir? Like, what should, what should you do? Or you can't go over to, like, a relative who has the name Amir and tell him, hey, like, your name is not, you know, a Jewish name. No, it is uh, Jewish, but it's not from the Torah. has no meaning to it. So we will add oh, I see. a name that have a meaning to it. Oh, I see. Amir will be the second name, and the first name will be the main one. Yeah, that's actually funny because that is, um, well, it's my husband's name, and his second name is Tamir. His first name is Eliyahu, so thank God for that. <laughs> Very good. Rabbi, can I ask you a question? Yes. Let's say someone is named after like a relative. Does that mean that like, um, like what is their essence will be like their relatives, like what they went through in life or the, or the qualities that they had? Some, some afraid of it and some are not. Let's see if you have somebody that passed away, Shalom, and his name was Eliyahu or David that he had life, not the best one. So by the Berit, will tell you, make a, a, a kavana on Eliyahu Anavi. Not your uncle. I'm naming this baby on the name of Eliyahu Anavi. My uncle happened to me that he had the same name. Okay, but this is not my intention. Eliyahu Hanavi didn't have Isurim. He is still here, and every Brit he is there. Uh, yes. And he was the one, and he will be the one to come to tell everybody the Mashiach is here. Wow. Yeah. So the half, the, I'm sorry. The, the name uh, Lamed Yud, Lamed Yud is too close to to uh, the devil's name, right? Chas Shalom. So are we allowed to advise, because I know somebody that has that name. Am I allowed to say that name? I know a few of them, they call the name Leila. Yeah, it's such a beautiful name too. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. It sounds really pretty, but are, we ourselves not allowed to call them this way, right? Should I ask her what's your Jewish name?
What does it mean, Bukhla? I don't know. I'm just saying it sounds really nice. You don't know? The Lamed. <laughs> Isn't it a flower? Ah. Huh? Isn't it a flower? In Persian, it's flower. In Persian, Layla. Layla. In Ibu, there is a flower called Lilach. Lilach. So can I say her actual name and then just think to myself I'm saying something else? Because is it fair for me to call her something else now? This name has to be erased. It's not a good name. Okay. So, okay. Am I allowed to say that? Anna, you know what? what, what I, I would like to say, I'm sorry. sorry. That a lot of uh, Ashkenazim that I know here... I would like to say something. One second. Um, that uh, even the rabbis, daughter that I know, they call this name, which is shocking to me. A couple of times you already mentioned, I know even our rabbi in here also said it's a very bad name, not even to say it. But I know a lot of Ashkenazim that rabbis call their kids this name, the girls. Which names? Layla. Uh, it's from endearment, I think, like yes. Layla. <laughs> the Ashkenazim have uh, this name? Layla. Layla? No. No, it's it's kind of, I, I think, actually, you. I have to say it's like a Greek from a Greece, Greek name, mm -hmm. Layla. It's a and, and believe it or not, this, this rabbi wears wear straps and, you know, that like huge furry thing around his neck. I think the name is Leia, and they call her Leia. No, like no, Dina no, Leia. Leia. no, no, that's exactly what they call her. They call her this name, Leila. They call Leila. 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 And I know a Leila. lot of Jewish kids Leila. that Leila. are very religious, they call this name. I don't know. No. My daughter goes to Beis Yaakov, and she, she has a classmate, Leila, but her full name is Leia. But parents prefer calling her Leila. Okay, so the Ashkenazim, you're not used to the language. They want to call Leia, so they call him Lele. Lele, you're not used to this. Actually, they say Leale. Maybe, maybe, I don't it's know. It's not Leila. So Rabbi, what is about the flower Lilach that you said in Hebrew? It's a flower. Excuse me, Rav. It's saying Layla is Hebrew and Arabic. It's really Lila, like night. Lila, but they say Layla. Layla. But it's Arabic and Hebrew. Yeah. Lila, but they're pronouncing it Layla. My mother had a friend Layla. That's what it is. And, uh, and, and in our books, Layla is the name of the I don't want to say what is this because uh, not a good thing. It's really more Arabic than Hebrew. Originally. Originally. It's the name of the of the wife of the devil. That's what it is. Scary. Yes. Is that the same as uh, Lily or Lily is okay? Same thing. So what, should a, what should a person it's do? Bad, no? That's their name. What should a person do? Should erase this name, Bichlal, not existing, and put a new name? Over here, we have to change the name already, not to add name. Change. So no one can call him this name? Rabbi, can a father and the son, and the son have uh, the same name, Hebrew name, while living in the for Sephardi? How can it be? Well, in Russia, then a year they change. And... 
I don't know someone does. It's not good. Of course, it's not good. Usually, they do it. I have a student. His name is Emmanuel, and the father name also Emmanuel. But the problem was his father passed away when his mother was expecting him. So when he was born, they called him Emmanuel. So that is Emmanuel Ben Emmanuel. What about grandfather? That's okay. That's okay. Thank you. I have grandchildren. If you call. My name, everybody will say, what? Rav, how come some people have a custom of naming after the living and others don't? That's a custom. What's the big deal? The Syrians do that. We do? Can we do tough? By the Ashkenazim, don't you dare do it. They say, what, you want me to die already? Right? For the Sfaradim, it is Kavot. It's Persians kavot. also don't do that, Rabbi. Ah? Persians also don't do that when the person alive. Yeah. Yeah. We also, also didn't do it, Rabbi. In, in, in uh, Samarkand, we didn't do it because we also say the same thing. You want me to die? <laughs> what? I don't. I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. They was. say they, they say it that. takes away. Rabbi, John do stand, Rabbi. John do stand. <laughs> rabbi, my father was very ill. He was named after my grandmother, and she was still alive. Was with my she son, lived eighteen and I years. Asked rabbi, if I can name my son Yaakov instead of Abraham. And the rabbi said, even though your father is very close to passing away, you are still not allowed to take that name. <sighs> I don't understand why, because Ari's a Sparty. So I thought, you know, maybe that would make sense. But the rabbi didn't let me. Yeah, a lot of rabbis don't. Ashkenazi. Yes, rabbi. Okay, because, because you are you Ashkenazi, uh, you have to follow. Very good, very good. You see, if this is the custom, you don't change it. Okay, so let's go to Taf. Taf. Very delicate. Rabbi, can I ask you a question? Let me finish, Moti. <laughs> If you don't mind, if you don't mind. Very delicate, very patient, very much calculated, and he is very much considers other people, you know, he makes sure he or she not to say things which are <coughs> people. These people are very talented. They like, they like to do things and they don't just talk. They talk less and they do a lot. They know how to keep secrets. And very balanced. Very balanced. That's tough. If it goes to the wrong side, stubbornness, very stubborn, becomes stubborn like mule, no patient, and very moody, extremely moody. Bermet, why a person becomes 
Moody. What is problem? He's unhappy with himself or with others, Rabbi? Yeah. He feels inside that he is not accomplishing. It's not him. Something is missing. He's missing. Why today we don't have patience? Why we don't have patience? Because everything is so fast. Is so it because we feel we deserve it, Rabbi? But what? Is it because we feel we deserve it, so we want it instantly, instant gratification? You know that it's a curse. What, wanting things right away? To be impatient, it's a curse. It's one of the klalot in the Torah. Is it because of Chava, what you did to Adam? No. It means that the person is not Sameach, is not happy. So this is one of the curses. Actually, that's the first curse on the list. If I will not be afraid, I'll say that this generation is cursed. We have no patience, Bechlad. Why? Because we're living in a generation that nobody is happy. They think they're happy. They're not. Far away from this. So the unhappiness continue to the kids as well, and they becoming miserable, and they don't know how to deal with that. Is the kids today have patient? No. Any sablanut? <laughs> no sablanut. Instant gratification is what they look for. Yeah, I have to have it now. It, it's a curse. You cannot even communicate with a person because you're impatient. Say, Why don't you talk? Why don't you talk? Talk. Let me think. They don't want you even to think. So, and that's where he becomes very stubborn. Okay. To the wrong side, of course. Imagine you marry somebody unpatient. Can you deal with that? Very difficult. No. Hard. Rabbi, very hard. I know so many of them. If, if he coming home and the food is not on the table hot, he will kill his wife. No patient. He can sit on the chair, his wife say, okay, I'll give you the food. He, one minute passes. It. No, no. Baby, mother. Rabbi, we're not even patient with Hashem. We, sometimes we pray for things and we want instantly to see it happen or to see that miracle. In, I, I felt that way many times, like even impatient with my prayers, but they come at their own time. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You know, even me, I had to work on my patient even though I know I'm very, very much patient, but I had to do tshuva. I'll tell you where, I'll tell you where. I, once I flew to, to Hawaii. I, I had the reason, 
I flew there, I get into a cab, and the driver, I'm telling you, maybe five miles per hour. And he's singing to, and the road is empty. <laughs> and he sings to himself, nah, 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 nah. and I'm sitting in the back. I say, either I'm crazy, either this guy is crazy. The, the road is empty, press the gas already. I told him, excuse me, sir. He said, yes, yes. With a smile on his face. I told him, you know, the road is empty. Maybe you can speed up a little bit. He looks at me and said, are you from New York? <laughs> <laughs> I knew he would say that. <laughs> I said, yes, I'm from New York. He said, yes, it's very obvious. I can see. I got myself, to, I got him, I said, oh boy. Oh boy, what a message from, 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 what a message from Hashem. Even you have to work on your patient. <laughs> I got to the hotel, I said, okay, where did I goofed? When I mean, so, he drive five miles, probably Kaddish Boch who told him to, to drive five miles per hour to show me that I still have to work on my patient. Very good. From that moment on, that's it. You can drive two miles per, per hour, I, I don't care, okay? And sometimes you get into a cab, the driver is a mishuga. No patient at all. Cutting left, cutting right, tich, ta, ta. I say, Habibi, I start to think about my books. I feel bad for him. It's a curse. Imagine all day long to sit on the wheel and to drive like that. Don't you want your husband to be patient? Ah. Of course, Rabbi, of course. And the husband, don't you want your wife to be patient with you? Yes. Oh, finally I hear one more. <laughs> yes, yes. Probably your wife was threatening you, don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> don't be afraid, guys. I'm here. It's okay. You can talk. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. Everybody wants the other partner to be patient with him. Isn't Hashem patient with, with us? Huh? Very patient. Yes, very, yes. very, very. Extremely patient. Hashem waiting until last moment of a person. Maybe last moment in Duchuva. Maybe. And we want everything instantly. Now, now, mommy, I need sneakers. Okay, I'll buy you. No, I need it now. Tomorrow I need it. Why you need it for? You have five of them in, in the closet. Not comfortable, too small, too big, to this, to that. Now you have to buy me. Try to tell these kids, okay? When me and Abba will decide that you need, we'll buy it for you. Oh, he will become Antifa. BLM. World War Three will break out. Yeah, Mapito.
when we're getting married in the beginning, do you have any patient? Yes. He shook up. <laughs> A lot of patients. If you will have patient, my phone will be quiet. Mostly it's for a show, Rabbi. Everything that the other spouse do right away, Rabbi Chaimov, my husband did this, my wife did this. Why? I don't have patience. How do you deal with impatient people? What do you do? First of all, you have to pray for them for Refua Shlema. Refua Shlema? Of course. Is this like a curse? Of course. On a person? Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yes. So let me tell you what we're going to do. First of all, I want to tell you, I said it already at noon time, I'll repeat myself again. From this Shabbat and on, I'm coming back to the shul to give Shabbat afternoon a class. For ladies, Rabbi? Men and ladies as well. Whoever wants to come is invited right away. What time, Rabbi, Shabbat afternoon? I'm starting at five o'clock this Shabbat. This Shabbat, you're gonna have two of us. My son will be here. The one who, who lost his... Uh, Asaf. Asaf, yes. And when he'll be done, I'll take over. Our house. And we're going to talk about things that we always talk to whoever coming to my classes in the, the summertime knows what we're talking about. Half of the shoe is the jokes and half of the shoe is the shoe. But after all... <laughs> what are we get a lot out every Saturday? Out huh? Is this every Saturday at 5 o'clock? Every Saturday. Or just this? Every uh -huh. Sunday we'll, we'll, we'll tell you what time is it. Okay? Thank you. So, I know it's going to be cold a little bit, but okay, it's fine. The reward will, will be much greater. The reward. So, and I'll be... Not over the Zoom. Finally, I'll be alive. You know, I can see people. I can talk to them. Make my, my life much more e easier. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do after Shabbat. After Shabbat. Let me see what I'm going to do. Okay. Go back to the four elements, and I'll tell you from one element what a character will be. So it's going to be much easier for, for you to know who are your kids, where they coming from, from which element, and how to channel it to the right. Meaning, everything is there. Everything is there. We just have to channel it to the right direction. When you mentioned the uh, um, elements, are you talking just the letter elements or the elements from... Um, who is from coming from fire? <laughs> who is coming from earth? Who is coming from the wind? Who is the door? And who is coming from the water? No, I'm, I'm talking about the months. Remember you said there's also months elements? Mazola. So it was all combined. Okay. 
So now, if you know the months, what is the character? Who is, the who is this now? It will be much easier for you to choose. Can you guys more, mute yourself, please? It will be much easier for you to choose a name to know what will fit very good for that month. Here for Elk Parkway West, I-678 Expressway. We'll talk about it. Each month we know already the character of, of the month. We call it the mazal of the month. And according to this, if you remember, I told you what each one called for. Yeah. And we're going to find a name that will fit this month. <laughs> Balance it out. Please mute yourselves. Nelly. I have a question about names. Yes. Um, if somebody's na first name is modern and the middle name is biblical, such as Leo or Rivka, should they switch the names around? Very good. Yes. Rabbi, what do you think about name Sapir? Is it from Torah? Sapir for a girl. There is also Sapir for a boy. So what do you suggest? Is a girl named Sapir she wants to know? It's better not to call it. Let me tell you. What's written about this name? Okay, I'll read it from the inside so you will know. Sorry, uh, I forgot to add. If, if you change the name, does it have to be official? None, like like uh, when saying Misha Barak or something? If you want to, yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, please mute yourself. Кто знает, кроме меня еще? Кто знает? Акилова, please mute yourself. Sorry. Okay, so he's saying over here that it's not good to to call this name because a name that is good for men and for for ladies. It's not good to call it because maybe the guy will get an, uh, a character of, of a lady or she can have a character of a man and it will cause them problems. To, to, to conceive and to live because it's it's the it's the opposite. What name is that, Rabbi? Every name that you can call a boy and you can call a girl also. Ah, oh, okay. Rabbi, how about Simcha? And Yona. Okay. Simcha 
and Yona is the exception to the rule. These two names are the exceptions to, to the rule. Why? Because it's the name from the Torah. What about Ariel? Ariel is the name of an angel. It's okay. Rabbi, what about Ilanit? It's not a, a boy's version of Elan, right? It is? It is. But Gabriel is also angel, Rabbi. Why not Gabriella? Gabriella is no good. You said Gabriel is no I know, but you said just now that Ariel is the name of an angel. Gabriela, Gabriela. Gabriel is also an angel. Ariela, Ariela. Rabbi, so does that mean I have to change my daughter's name because her name is Ilanit? You can add the name. But Dov, you mentioned before that you're going to have a separate uh, session about um, names of angels. Are you going to be doing it still? Okay. We have a lot to cover. Have a good night, everybody. It was nice talking to you. Thank you, Rabbi. Good night, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good night, Rabbi. Good night, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. See you in the morning. See you in the morning at nine o'clock. Whoever is interested, I'll see you on Shabbat. Rabbi, what time is the Shabbos lecture in the shul? Five? Upstairs, like it used to be? Okay. Thank you so much. Then I will see you there. Nice. Good Shabbos.